Well, join me today as we make a strawberry themed front porch sign for the dollhouse. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy this project is. All right, for our porch sign this time, I decided I wanted to start with a solid piece of wood rather than the strips of wood like we normally do. Maybe whoever made this sign had some leftover lumber. Maybe they made shelves in their house or whatever. And so I cut a piece. I wanted a piece that was three-fourths of an inch wide and five inches long, and I didn't have anything that size. So I cut down one of these jumbo craft sticks from Walmart. I love these things, and they cut beautifully. So this is cut down to the size I want. So now we're going to paint it. And I'm going to paint it, I want kind of an off-white, and I want to use just the paint from Plaid this time. That's kind of my challenging myself to not hit my paint stash, to just use paints I have from Plaid. So I wanted a little bit off-white, but I don't have one. But I do have white, and I have Daybreak, which is a pretty pale yellow. So I'm going to put some, yellow, some white out on my tray and just a drop of this daybreak and I'm going to mix them together and quite frankly I don't care if this mix is solid in fact if it's a little mottled a little bit um, streaky that's fine that kind of goes with the look I'm after today but it came out that's a perfect color and since this is a relatively thin piece of wood, and it's a solid piece, I'm going to paint both sides. Not only will this finish the back of our sign, but more importantly, it will help the wood to not warp as it dries. So when this dries, it may warp a little bit while it's wet, meaning it may cup a little bit, but by the time the paint dries all the way, it should be flat or almost flat. So I'm going to let this paint dry and when it's dry we'll come back and we'll do some aging to this. Alright so my paint has now dried and I love how this looks. It looks fine. My board is very minimal amount if any warping. So now I'm going to add an intermediate layer of matte Mod Podge. That's because this surface between that cheap wood and that matte paint is very, very porous. So if I do any aging on top of this, if I get too much on, it's going to be very hard to remove. By sealing this with just a light coat of matte Mod Podge, we will be able to do our aging and if we get too much, we can wipe it off. It won't immediately soak into the matte finish. So I'm going to let this dry, and then I can come back, and we can do some aging to our wood. All right, my Mod Punch is dried, and now this is a nicely sealed surface. That means that my paint on my next step, I'll have a little more control over it because I want to do some aging to this. We're going to do some aging and then we're going to put the lettering on and we'll probably do a little more aging afterwards. I want to make this look not quite so pristine. I want to use kind of a brown, but in the paints that Plaid sent me, there were no browns. And I decided I'm going to mix a brown. Show you this is another option. I've got a green, which I'm going to use in a little bit for part of our sign painting. I also have some red, which is also going to be used on the sign. Red and green, because they are opposite each other on the color wheel, will, you can mix them and get a neutral kind of brownish color. Now we might need to adjust this. It's coming out a little on the green side. I think I'm actually going to add just a teeny bit of this yellow that we used earlier. We're going to use this yellow again. And this way, when I get this brown, neutral, aging color done, it is going to be a color that's related to the other colors I'm using on my board. I think I want just a little more red. The only problem I have with mixing paint like this is sometimes I end up with an awful lot of paint by the time I get the color that I'm looking for because I keep adding drops of paint. a 
hair on my tray. All right. Yeah, that'll work. It's kind of a ready brown color, and that's fine. To apply it, I'm not using a paintbrush. I'm going to use a cotton swab or a Q-tip. I'm going to wipe it off. And I'm going to use a new one. Just rub this in. I'm going to do that all the way down, and then I'm going to get out a wet wipe and further age this. I don't want to wipe it all the way off, but I want to wipe it back a little. I don't want any real harsh lines to this. But I want that background to look like it's got some age to it there. Now I am going to take my paint on my Q-tip and I want to finish the edges of my sign. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. I'm okay with imperfection on these edges. Maybe this is a board that was used when it was found to be used for this sign. We don't know. All right, now I want that to all dry. I do want to soften where it's coming across the front. All right, I'm going to let that dry. When that paint is dry, I'll come back and we will add our lettering to the front of our sign. All right, so my paint has dried and I also took a pencil off camera and I drew a line the length of my board down the center. I divided it in half lengthwise and then each of those halves in half. So I have four sections that are an inch and a quarter long and then they're marked down the center. That will help me to place my letters. So I'm going to start by penciling. And since we have the clear finish on here, it's easy to wipe off any mistakes that we make. So I'm not going to put an O in yet. We're going to do an O. That will be done last. And I'm not, I'm not concerned about making these letters exact right now. Any lines we don't need, we can erase once our paint is dry. Okay, I am, I'm okay with what I've done there. So I've got some black paint, and I am going to use, I pulled out the smallest brushes I have available. This is just black apple barrel that Plaid sent me. Uh, I think I'm going to use this little brush. I believe this is a filbert. Yep, this is a number two filbert. I think this is going to work the best for me for controlling these small areas. Now those pencil lines I drew for my lettering are just guides. Now, what if you don't want to write the letters? Look for stickers. Look for stickers that are about the right size. I would guess my letters are probably about an inch tall. I can measure them when I get done here. I'm eyeballing them. You could do all your lettering with stickers, or you could cut your own letters from, with, like if you have a Cricut or something like that. Oops. I hate when I try to fix a letter and I make it worse. All right, that's, I'm okay with those. I'm gonna make my H a little taller, I think. All right, I'm gonna let those, that paint all dry. I think I'll probably put just a little more on that top thing at that E. Oops. But, no, if I really hated my lettering, I could actually wipe it off with a wet, 
like a wet wipe or a wet paper towel at this point and let the water dry and start over. So I am going to let this paint dry. I'm going to clean my paintbrush and when that's dry we're going to come back and attempt to put a strawberry where the letter O goes. So I'll be right back. All right, so my black paint is dried, and off camera I did sketch in a strawberry with my pencil. I just looked up, I googled simple strawberry shape and did an image search with that. And I came up with several very varieties of um, designs to look at. So I'm going to paint it. I've just got a very fine brush. What is this brush? This is a liner, a number one liner, when I'm using the flag red again from Apple Barrel. But because we've got this sealed with the Mod Podge, it's easy to erase any mistakes with your pencil and paint will wipe off if need be. You can use a wet or damp paper to erase any paint mistakes that you might make. I think my paintbrush might have a loose hair in it. All right, now this red will need to dry, and once this is dry, I'll come back. We'll add some leaves and some seeds to our strawberry, and then we can finish up our sign. So I'll be back when this dries. All right, so my red paint is dry, so I've got some, the green that we used earlier to make the brown, this bright green. And this is a number two shader. And I'm going to be brave and do this one without sketching it in. Let's see if I can do this. There. And that's, um, yeah, I think that's plenty. Then I've got my pale yellow here. This is that daybreak yellow. I really like this color, it's really pretty. And I am just going to use the handle on this paintbrush. Come on. There we go. And that is all there is to it. We're going to let this paint dry and then I'll come back. We'll erase the lines and I think we'll put a clear coat on this one just to protect everything. So I'll be back in just a moment. All right, my paint is all dry. So I'm just going to go through and erase these little lines I made. Actually, because we did them over the Mod Podge, they erase really easily. go and I'm ready to seal this and I'm just going to use some matte Mod Podge. I do want to seal over this now because that will seal my paint on. Since the paint is on top of Mod Podge it might want to flake off a little more easily than it would just on the wood. But that's easy enough to remedy with a quick coat of matte Mod Podge and then it won't be too shiny because I don't want this to be really shiny. So there we go. We have our sign. So let's let the Mod Podge dry and then we will see how this looks over on the front porch of the dollhouse. And here's our completed sign sitting right next to the front door of the dollhouse. I think this turned out really, really cute. It's, it's, it's right up there in my favorites. I, I really enjoyed this one. Uh, be sure and check the blog post. I'll give you some alternatives if you don't feel up to painting the strawberry on here like I did. I'll have a list of those. Some of my ideas I came up with that um, I think will work instead. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure and hit the like button. Leave me a comment. What themes would you like to see the front porch decorated in? If you enjoy my content and haven't subscribed, I encourage you hit that subscription button and the notification bell so that you know when I put up a new video. 
Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.